I'm a big fan of the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Like a lot of people. I... narrowed down to the classic Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon shows, though. Because... I think the rest that Sega had spawned was rat crap. Each to their own. I was browsing eBay the other day, wondering if there would be any items about my favorite character from the series. Sally Acorn. Indeed, what I found was plushie that was manufactured in Sega World of Sydney. Which, sadly, closed down. Due to the lack of visitors in 2006. Those Sally plushies were very rare. But I didn't have the money to buy her, and my parents would despise me for it. I examined the plushie for a while, as the article came with pictures. This Sally even had her jacket. On it was written with a permanent marker. G-O-D. I don't really know what it meant. Probably the initials of the child owning her before they sold her. I clicked the back button to return to the Sonic Sally search, knowing that I wouldn't win the auction anyways. Only to find that another article had appeared. Sonic State Tam Cartoon All Episodes, with the price of one dollar on instant buy. Satam DVDs were never released where I came from, so as happy as I was, I wanted to rewatch the show and I checked out the article. It had no description and no address where it came from, you know, like Germany, Canada, etc. It was just missing. And the shipping price was stated to be free. I looked at the photo of the article. It was a blank CD. I decided to just go ahead and buy it anyway. Not just for the nostalgia, but the writing was great, and I loved Robotnik in this series. Well... It all started when the mail arrived. It arrived the next morning, and oddly it was a Sunday. But I was happy to receive the episodes, and immediately put the blank CD into my laptop, starting the DVD. Sadly, the DVD didn't start. But it offered to show me the files, so I opened the folder and I saw a... Sally.exe application. I was really confused at it being an EXE, but I started it anyways, and indeed it was playing a Satam episode. The episode, Hooked on Sonics, began. The episode started out all normal, along with the intro. But the sad thing was that my computer blue screened when the kissing scene of Sonic and Sally started. You know, when Sally walks over to Sonic and kisses his cheek, he calls her kiss not so good and grants her a better one. <laughs> it was a really cute scene, too. The computer rebooted and I took out the CD as I just assumed that it malfunctioned and I threw it away. I could have asked the person to give me my money back, but he can keep the one dollar I gave to him. I mean, it's just a dollar. I continued to browse the internet, speak to my friends on Skype, and all that. Nothing was wrong until when I was watching a random YouTube video, and my cursor started to completely spaz out. I disconnected my mouse, but my cursor continued to thrash around the screen. I even deactivated my touchpad, and it just continued. Suddenly, it just came to a stop. So I carried on, ignoring what had happened. Soon, I found myself downloading a ROM for Sonic the Hedgehog. As soon as it had downloaded, I started up my emulator and began the game in window mode. But... Oddly, the complete screen went black. I just shrugged it off and waited for the game to start, assuming that there were some malfunctions with my emulator. The familiar, SEGA, jingle didn't sound. Well, it did, but it was slowed down so much, it almost sounded demonic and it made me cringe. The background remained black and 
Sonic didn't unpass the logo. It faded to black, and some text appeared. At first I thought it was red font, but it looked like it was scratched into my computer screen. I blinked and flinched as the main screen came on. The sky was a dark gray, and the clouds looked dull and black, like right before a thunderstorm. The mountains were decayed, and so was the logo. It even looked partially rusted. I was amazed at the pixely detail, but it also scared me. Sega 1991 was now replaced with Sega 666, and the water was a bloody red. The familiar music wasn't even playing either. Just a 16-bit mess of sounds, with the demonic Sega occasionally mixed in. Instead of Sonic showing up, two characters appeared next to the logo. Tails and Knuckles. The sight of them terrified me even more. Tails' eyes were black and they were... they were bleeding. His fur had become a dull gray black as well, and he had an expression of anguish on his face. Knuckles looked far worse. His fur had darkened to a reddish gray. His dreadlocks were dripping with blood and his eyes were black and bleeding like tails, and he had a look of sadness on his face. Just then, I noticed a new character pop out of the middle of the logo. A pink, bubbly little hedgehog poked her head out. At first she was smiling, but then frowned at what was around her, looking confused and nervous like she didn't even know what was going on. Amy Rose? What's this all about? I thought. Curiosity drove me to press enter. I wish I hadn't done so. Kyle didn't want to play with me. The writing appeared again. What a shame. But I can play with you, right? The demonic Sega jingle sounded again for a split second, as an image flashed. It disappeared too fast, so I couldn't make it out, but I swear that I saw what looked to be a red and black Sonic with black and red eyes. I almost felt them pierce me, and that moment of it made me jump. I didn't begin in Green Hill Zone Act 1, though. I wish I did. Instead, the title card read, Not Perfect Act 1. The game began. The ground looked like the normal Green Hill Zone, but the background was pitch black. Amy stood where Sonic would be in the original game. Surprisingly, that was a well-made sprite. It wasn't her classic self, but her current self. It looked... official, even. On the opposing side of the screen where Amy was, there was a large, silver ring. In front of the ring stood a sprite of Sonic, with a smile on his face. The animation of Amy standing there was that she stared forward at Sonic with a lovey-dovey expression, as hearts came from her head here and there. I guess I should head to Sonic, I thought, as I moved Amy towards him. But... Sonic ran away and jumped into the ring. I made Amy leap right after him. The level teleported to one of the stages where you can get a Chaos Emerald. The background was pink with love hearts all over it. While it looked really cute, I was distracted by only having four red and white colored spheres to jump on. And I tried to balance Amy on top of them as she desperately tried to keep onto the spear, but... My control slipped, and Amy fell. 
I fell onto a wall of gold spheres. Just as I thought that I would teleport back, a loud shriek sounded, and this image of this demonic sonic continued to flash over the screen. The screen completely spazzed out, and I heard shrieks. Loud shrieks from what I could swear was Amy Rose herself. I kept hearing no, no, and loud cries of agony and pain, which abruptly ended with more static for a split moment before the screen cut to black. Soon, the title screen appeared again. Knuckles and Tails were missing, and instead, Amy appeared. She was smiling her usual cute smile, but her body had holes. Not not bleeding holes or bullet holes, just holes that pierced her body all over. Her colors had faded to a dull black and white. Even her eyes looked oddly disfigured. This scared me so much that my entire body began to itch. I scratched myself over and over as I watched a new character appear. I frowned upon seeing Cream, who had a sheer, terrified expression and huddled against a logo for comfort. Poor Cream. I wanted to quit the game, but as if something was forcing me to, I hit start again and the screen faded. Kind and Fair, Act 1 The stage was blank now, and the background music was... a drowned sounding. Slower version of the Green Hill Zone. It nearly made me gag. But... something forced me to play. The stage began, and... Cream Sprite was like Amy's. Very well done. The environment was childish. It looked like a pretty cute cutout. In front of Cream was the TV box that gave you a higher speed. I made Cream crouch down and do a spin dash, and I dashed ahead, crashing into the box. The level never changed. The ground was a solid platform, and it seemed that Cream was going faster and faster and faster as she crashed into more and more and more boxes. I noticed that the music got completely out of sync the further that Cream went, which scared me. Suddenly, Cream crashed into a wall of spikes. A loud splat sounded, which didn't even sound like it would belong in a 16-bit game. Poor Cream was torn to shreds. Blood dripped from the spikes and the blade rabbit as... The background began to slowly melt in front of my eyes. The image of Sonic flashed again, and soon the title screen appeared. As expected, I was back on the title screen, and Cream appeared with Amy. While she did look scared, one of her eyes was... How do I put it? Droopy and dead, and bled a weird black goo. Her ears were over her face now instead of the back of her head. Her color scheme had changed from brown and orange to a very, very dark purple and red, and her dress was a dull gray. Time for the third character. And god, did I want to cry and weep when I saw that Sally Acorn popped out of that goddamn logo, putting on her innocent smile as she waved towards me like she... like she didn't know what torture would happen to her. This game was so terrifying, and yet... So fascinating. I wanted to stop real bad, but my hand wouldn't budge. I even started shaking. I wanted to reach for the power button, turn the damn thing off, but my hand just wouldn't move. And before I knew it, I already hit start and the screen faded. Blank. Act 9, it said. 
A sad, dull melody played in the background as the silhouette of the ground and a sprite silhouette that resembled Sally appeared in front of a background that consisted the whole group. Amy, Cream, Knuckles, Tails, and Robotnik appeared, all in their tortured forms with a saddened expression. It also had Sonic, but in a nearly unrecognizable way. He had this wide grin on his face, with razor-sharp teeth. He had black eyes with red dots for pupils, and they were bleeding. It looked like... His pose looked like he was going to reach out to the silhouette in front of him. I tried to move Sally and get her out of there, but none of the walls would budge, and Sally would do a pushing animation. I stopped in the middle of the stage as, to my horror, the stage began to shrink, and the black started to close in on Sally. I tried moving her again, but the walls wouldn't budge or move. I walked Sally back to the middle of the stage as the walls closed in on her. I could only watch as she crouched down before she completely disappeared in the black. The red writing appeared on my screen again. Only, it was dripping like blood, and it was crooked. Sonic, my love. Suddenly, a familiar scene faded in. I recognized it immediately, as the Sonic State Tam episode was playing from where the CD cut off. It had this reddish hue, and Sonic had these black, bleeding demonic eyes. Sally looked even worse. At least to me, she did. Her eyes were... Her eyes were missing. It was like they were taken out and Sally's skull was sewn closed again. Blood was running from her wound. It didn't look like it was photoshopped. It was actually animated. Sonic pulled Sally over like in the show, except these tentacle-like things bursted out of their mouths and locked, making these disgusting slurping noises. I could even see them bulge in Sally's throat. The worst thing was that they even looked like they were enjoying it. And for a moment, I think it was too. I could see the corrupted tails and knuckles in the background too. Sonic pulled away. So? Not bad, Sally simply replied. I gagged and looked away from the screen. But... But out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something on my bed. I looked over and... To my horror... On my bed... Was the Sally doll I saw on eBay. With its eyes missing.